Thank you, Shram. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your, your presentation. Thanks for having me today. And uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here to debate with some several keynote speakers about such relevant topics like digital health services and uh, medical device regulation. So I'll start introducing myself. My name is Marco Benedetto. I'm a biomedical engineer and solution analyst at Kellyan. That is a digital health company headquartered in Napoli, Italy, uh, that is specialized in the design and development of digital health solutions such as uh, e-health apps and, uh, of course, software medical devices. I am currently also a PhD student in uh, big data management at the University of Salerno. Italy. Um, briefly, my field of interest includes uh, AI, multiple multi learning, and big data analytics for personalized medicine. So I'm a tech guy. <laughs> uh, well, let's go to the core of the of this speech, the MDR. MDR. So in the digital health domain, the regulatory framework plays a key role since new models and uh, innovative solutions are becoming more and more available. Uh, in fact, today, one of the most relevant topics on which the public debate is open is, in fact, the EU Medical Device Regulation, also known as MDR, which, based on my personal experience at Kellyan, I can say is not worth in considering the new challenging new challenges that all stakeholders, like us in Kellyan, um, must face. It goes without saying that the MDR has an, imp an unprecedented impact on digital health companies that leveraging on their skills and internal knowledge base must be able to face all the critical aspects and the opportunities that arise from this mutational context in order to stay competitive. Well, let's explain briefly uh, what MDR is and uh, its impact on companies like Kellyan. The new medical device regulation has replaced the old medical device directive and uh, it was published in uh, 2017. Uh, until May 2021, uh, the MDR came into effect gradually, but now it applies fully. So uh, the, the scope of the MDR has broadened, so more device more devices fall within its scope uh, compared to, to the older directive. Um, and also it sets higher quality standards and intensify the focus on a life cycle approach to safety supported by clinical data. This is the most important fact. MDR has also introduced a new set of classification rules uh, that has uh, that um, that has a, a huge impact on manufacturers uh, and on Kellyan and uh, its products. In particular, uh, Rule Eleven in Annex Eight uh, made the ground shake a bit. It was uh, it had a huge impact on us because it states that software intended to provide information that is used to make, the, uh, the, make decisions with diagnostic or therapeutic purposes are now class 2A devices, except if such decisions uh, have a high risk, uh, in which the cases the software will be class 2B or even the highest class, that is the class 3. So this new software specific classification rule pushes almost therefore uh, all standalone software, also known as SAMD, uh, many of which were class one devices into the higher risk classes. And that means that even more devices must be scrutinized by a notified body. I would like to clarify that this rule does not apply to, to software that is a part of an embedded system uh, that is also known as a software in a medical device, medical device SIMD, uh, which is considered like an accessory and therefore directly assist the medical functionality of the actual medical device. So when the, when the MDR went to, went to into effect, like any other manufacturers, uh, we in Kellyan checked our portfolio products of software solution that we've developed over the time uh, to determine whether some of them needed to be reclassified. Uh, just to give you an example um, on the, how the assessment was conduct conducted in Kellyan, uh, over the, fast, the past few years, we developed a, a, a software solution that implement an algorithm uh, to predict the 
patient response to the administration of uh, growth hormone. Uh, and this solution helps endocrinologists and pediatricians uh, treat children suffering from idiopathic growth uh, hormone deficit or Tarnan syndrome, or even children born small for uh, gestational age. And according to this new rule in introduced by the MDR, this software is now class 2A. And because its declaration of conformity was drawn up, was issued before May 2021, it can be still placed on the market until May 2024, provided that there are no significant changes in, the, in the, its design, the product design, and uh, its intended purpose. That's the key for a, a medical device. And of course, the, 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 this device must comply with the new requirements introduced by the MDR. And I mean the post-market surveillance, the traceab traceability, and liability. The EU has introduced this transition phase where a product certified under direct, the old directive and the, the one and those uh, certify, certified under the MDR coexist on the market until 2024 uh, to allow a smooth transition to, to the regulation without disrupting the medical device supply. So, as I said before, MDR intensify, uh, intensifies focus on uh, the clinical benefits, which are defined in the MDR by the MDR as a positive impact of the device uh, on the health of, uh, of an individual, expressed in terms of one or more meaningful, measurable, patient-relevant clinical outcomes, or even a, a positive impact on public health, health in general, or um, a positive, positive impact on uh, patient management, for example. Uh, the new benefit-oriented clinical evaluation process benefits, of course, patients uh, and uh, as well as healthcare professionals that uh, now uh, can rely on certified medical devices whose positive impact uh, is supported by relevant real-world clinical data and must not trust manufacturers' marketing claims about their products, for example. Last but not least, we, we in Kelly and firmly, firmly believe that this new scenario, um, uh, the company like us uh, could have the possibility to demonstrate that their software medical devices rely on a scientifically uh, and clinically validated basis. And that's a great challenge, of course, it's not that simple. Uh, moreover, this new uh, regulative framework creates a fair market access and forces the company to review their claims and then decide whether to remove them or uh, seek, clinical, uh, seek clinical evidence from the post-market surveillance that's, that's a source of data for them to support their claims. So uh, to work hard to meet the MDR new requirements leads, of course, to many benefits to patients and for uh, healthcare professionals, but in some ways for digital health companies as well. But this new effort could mean that you must implement a new design or production, entire pro production process, or if you don't have one yet, uh, a certified quality management system. Uh, if we and, and the other company like, like us, uh, digital health companies, won't be able to do that, uh, we may face setbacks such as investment loss, fines and penalties, additional, additional regulatory oversight, or more. If products are taken off the market uh, and the media publish a report about it, about the, the risk for patients about for your, um, for your product or the claim that you made uh, about your product, you could receive an additional financial damage as your customer will choose, will choose another alternative, uh, maybe, maybe a, a safer one. Uh, we are aware that notified bodies and the in-house professional, I, I include myself in the in-house professional because I write a technical file required for, by the, the regulation. We, we all get, uh, will get busier as the, the 2024 deadline draws closer. And moreover, um, the professional, my colleagues may struggle to make sure that one, all products are classified appropriately. Oh, two, 
all product documentation and evidence of compliance will be available and conform with the new requirements introduced by the MDR. And you have the required, pl required plans that are brand new for the regulation. I mean, the post-market surveillance plans or the liability plan, just to mention a few. So like a, a take message and in a long-term perspective, we suggest, we, we firmly suggest to act now and engage all different teams in your, in your company to involve them in the design development uh, and quality assurance of medical devices to be ready for the next deadline. If you have, for example, class one devices that must be reclassified as class two, uh, 2A or class B or even class three, engage all your teams in your company to be ready and um, because the risk is that your devices are no longer marketable and must be withdrawn from the market so thank you and these are my contacts so if you want keep in touch